Okay, folks, the uh, day's finally come. If you've got a uh, Reximax regime like this one, or any of the Reximax range, or any PC for that matter, the principles are the same. So, what I'm going to show you now is I strip the rifle down, and what you'll need to do to fit a regulator. Uh, the regulator I've fitted in this is a Robert Lane regulator. So if you go on his website or eBay page, you'll see the uh, regulators for these. Basically based around the Krells, but uh, I think better made, better quality. But anyway, first thing if you've got your scopes on, they come off. And then you've got some screws to take out. They got two, four, six, eight, three millimeter screws to take out. There's four on the Picatinny rail. There's two at the top on the back of the upper stock, and then there's two either side of the upper stock. We've also got right at the front on either side two two millimeter. Uh, Allen screws that need coming out. Now after they come out you can basically take the rail off, take the upper part off. Uh, comes as standard with a shroud so what you would also do is actually unscrew the shroud, pull that off and at the end of the barrel there will be a T-piece that will also need unscrewing when that's off you can then unscrew the three one meter allen nuts that's on top of the end of the uh, shroud and that's at the rear end and that can all come off the final one is a five millimeter screw that's underneath the stock uh, there's a little hole in it so if you get your five millimeter allen key you can put that in hook it around pull the plastic cover off stick your uh, allen wrench in undo the uh, five millimeter bolt and then you'll need to come and use a one millimeter allen wrench for the trigger shoe so you loosen that off and then you can pull off the bottom part uh, along with the trigger shoe and that gives you access then to the uh, working parts and the action on it at that point what you will need to do uh, on this side at the back you'll see on the action you'll see a little silver square silver piece I think it's a, a one millimeter allen bolt in it you unscrew that to loosen it off and underneath there's a little uh, nut that will need undoing and taking off once that's done you turn your action over to the so it's on the right hand side and you'll see a nut on the framework about there right at the bottom you, you loosen that off and then that loosens the frame off and you, you can then pull all the framework off the front of the rifle and that just leaves you then with the barrel breech block and the air cylinder from that point it will then need to be using uh, your extractor set to get off the anti-tamper because that's as far as you can go so what you need to do first uh, the main thing is to get your cylinder off so you can put your regulator in. So in the first place, right underneath, around here, you'll see an actual brass plug, and in front of that you'll see a three millimeter Allen nut. Take the Allen nut out. And the brass plug is actually covering up another allen nut so what you need to do then is using a punch you need to hit it in the middle to make a, a mark for the drill 
ideally you want you you'll need a pillar drill to do that but if you've not got a pillar drill a, nor, a normal drill will do uh, but you do need a vise really to hold it in place so you put it in your vise and using your, your drill uh, and your extractor set if you've got one I'll leave a link to a good set that I got it's about £14 comes with uh, about five reverse uh, drill bits and five extractors now most of the time you don't even need your extractors because once you start drilling in the opposite direction it grips onto the screws and basically pulls them out anyway that's what worked on this and the other rifle so uh, you get that copper plug off by drilling it out and then you can undo your other three millimeter nut and you're about to wiggle your cylinder off at that point <clears throat> you can just get hold of your cylinder turn it and you should be able to unscrew the valve if you can't, if you can't unscrew it like that just stick the uh, cylinder in a vise making sure you've covered it with a leather strap or whatever and that gives you better grip to get both hands on it then and, and undo it that's as far as you need to go to start off with you don't need to remove the barrel I don't know why they put anti tamper on that because the transfer ports in the barrel and the block are fully open anyway so why they've put anti tamper on the barrel it just makes things harder if you've got a blockage in there and you need to clear it uh, there's also anti tamper underneath at the bottom and on the top now that's to get to your, to your actual hammer spring adjustment now there's no actual adjustment on it at all it's just uh, a cap that screws on to hold the hammer spring in place but if you do need to increase the power of the spring you can pack it with washers which I had to do uh, but uh, as I say there's no need to take that off at all to start off with uh, at the bottom like I say right at the back there's a snap off screw that will need drilling out you can use the same extractor drill set that should get it out the other one is on top and it's hidden away so when this is off you see a top cover on the back with four two millimeter allen screws and you undo that you can take the cap off and you'll see three locator pins two at the front one at the rear now the one at the rear is covering up the anti tamper so you need a pair of pliers to pull the pin out and then you can drill down through the top to your cap now it doesn't really matter if you can't get them out all you need to do is just drill straight down into the cap it will make it all in both ends of the cap but it don't matter you can still screw it in and out that will allow you then to get the cap off and if you need to make adjustments to the hammer spring either by cutting coils off it or adding pressure but with washes you can do but before you do that I'll just say get the front cylinder off first and uh, make any adjustments with the regulator to start off with now Robert Lane sets his regulator at 90 bar as it comes out uh, now it does recommend that you drill the transfer port 2.8 millimeters and you, what you do, the actual drill the transfer port out in the valve itself. So you get the, your valve, stick it in a vise, get your, your 2.8 millimeter drill bit that it sends you with the regulator. Just drill that hole out, and that that will give you the actual uh, extra uh, air that you will need for extra shots. Uh, but that's if you're doing the full tune. Now what I would suggest, unless you've done this before, don't bother drilling out the transfer port. Uh, just leave it as it is, just put your regulator in, making sure to uh, get some, well it's, it's actually included in, in the kit, you, you, there's a little packet of silicon grease, put that on your o-rings and then slide it in head first into uh, the cylinder don't push it all the way and just push it in so it's slightly 
just before the end of the threads and then using your, your valve you screw your valve back on and that'll push it back in when you put the actual regulator in there's an air breathing hole on top make sure that's pointing upwards uh, if you point it down it can mean the, the oil that's in the uh, regulator can leak out so keep it pointing upwards if you can screw it all the way in like I say it's set to uh, 90 bar put it all back together and you will have a chronograph because it's pointless doing this without a chronograph so the, the main things you'll need is your five uh, allen keys which is a one millimeter two millimeter uh, three millimeter five millimeter well, that's only four <laughs> Yeah, you need four, four allen keys, you need an adjustable wrench uh, and the reason I say adjustable wrench that's what you use to bleed off the air and the way to bleed off your air is just by putting your adjustable wrench on the actual manometer gauge at the back start turning it until you hear the air coming out and just let it bleed the air off that way uh, I must warn you now, when you do these uh, tunes, <clears throat> you might you might be lucky now that I've, I've done it. Uh, so I can tell you the, the different settings, but uh, normally you, you get through lots of air, so you, you'll get through a full air tank easily. So if you have got a comp uh, compressor, that does help. Uh, and you'll get through a lot of pellets as well, so we've got the tune right. So you'll need your four Allen keys, adjustable wrench extractor set which I'll leave a link to and uh, you need your drill advice if possible uh, pillar drill even better uh, and your chronograph so you can do all your your tuning and then also you need a, an efficient pellet to test it through not just the pellet you want to use for it because uh, put an efficient pellet through and it could be a lot more powerful so I would suggest something like JSB Hades or 10.334 grain uh, JSB something like that so if you're going for the basic tune you're just putting your reg in you set to 90 bar test it over the chronograph if it's in the right ballpark once you've tested it over the chronograph, great. That's as, that's as far as it goes. Now if you do want to do the full tune, like I say, you need to uh, get your valve out, put that in a vise, and then drill that transfer port out. Now I did send 2.8mm drill bit out, but once you do that, it puts the power right up then to about 29 foot pounds or 30 foot pounds. It's it's quite it's quite a, a lot of power to tame. So I think two and a half millimeters is uh, probably good enough. But uh, if you are going for the one like I did, what you'll need to do then to tame that extra power is to pack out your valve spring to make it harder to to open when they hammer it. So. So uh, in the end I found that uh, it, it does actually come with uh, some Delrin spacers so you can pack it but uh, I didn't find those very good so one thing I had to drill them out to fit over the actual uh, valve stem and another thing there's so much pressure behind the spring it starts to knurl up and mock the, the Delrin so over time it's just going to wear so your power will adjust so in the end now you've got some uh, split uh, washers got them in the vise, bent them round and two of those in the uh, valve did the job uh, that allowed me to open up the, the choke which is on the right hand side fully uh, over that time I had to bring the uh, hammer spring I cut a few cords off it because it was still showing too much power with the initial setup which was like uh, 
three Delrin washers and in fact it was, it was so hard to tame the power and with the three Delrin washers it actually damaged the valve because it put so much pressure on the tip of the valve it wore a ring in it and it started leaking so like I say the best way is using about five and a half millimetres of metal washers and that allowed me then with what I'd cut off the hammer spring to just pack the hammer spring with one metal washer uh, and that basically brought it right down to where it needed to be. Uh, also I had to play a lot around with the uh, regulator it kept like I said it came set at 90 bar and to get it right down to legal usable limits I set the regulator to 57 bar and in the end with the 177 I'm now getting about 200 shots with it uh, I think you'll see I did uh, I did a test with one particular pellet Get which one it was now I'll, I'll see you on the screen uh, 45 shots it gave 9 feet per second spread I think about I don't know if it's two and a half uh, standard deviation it's shooting really well now if you looked at the last video I did the part one that was the results of my first 20 yard test with 13 different pellets and only one of them which was the Hades didn't do well all the rest uh, group really well uh, all well under a five pence piece uh, I've got a few more I want to test through it uh, Big Dan's air guns he found through some of his reps and excellence the Spitfires work really well so I've got some of those today uh, it really work they're a lot better made than what they used to be but there's the Spitfires they're quite good so I'll, I'll see how they do through it so also got uh, some Snow Peaks round those ones which do pretty well and I've got some of these Sniper Mediums the last ones I tested were like sniper lights. I'll, I'll test the sniper mediums as well. But uh, yeah, pretty pleased with uh, what the results are now. Uh, like I say, there's me shroud fitted uh, Webley uh, moderator to it though. But that's about it, I think. Uh, like I say. To remove the anti temple like I say, for the armor spring, you're going to have to uh, take the top cover off when the stock's off, taking the four bolts out, uh, take the pin out, and then drill straight down. And same with the other side, you drill up from the other side, and then I'll get, get you access to the armor spring. If you do want to take your barrel off, there's an anti tamper, uh, I believe, at the rear can drill that out so you can get your barrel out so you can clean your barrel and help helps you if you need to work change o-rings or remove any blockages uh, so the best pellets now most efficient pellets come in at around 11.9 maximum uh, the chokes working really well uh, when the chokes fully closed brings back an average of 5.8 foot pounds and I have 6 foot pounds so it's spot on as far as that goes now when you put it back together something you need to uh, make sure I found this out, I was thinking I was having uh, leaky o-rings or blown o-rings but it wasn't that what it is, right at the uh, back when you put your bolt forward where the pellet probe is it's a square block behind it you've got to make sure when you seat it when you put everything back together get another allen uh, wrench push it forward as far as it'll go so it's almost flat at the end 
and tighten up the screw. Of course if it goes back too far, air blows out the back. So you've got to make sure that when you put it back together, the probe is all the way forward as far as it can go. So that square is as flush with the uh, end of the block if you can. And that's about it. So uh, really pleased with the tune. Uh, what I might do is uh, I'll do a, a sheet with all my settings and how to strip it down and how to take the anti tamper off. I'll do it as a PDF file and I'll probably upload it to uh, the Reximex site. Uh, I might send one to Robert Lane as well. But uh, the tunes come out really well. Uh, next things I need to be doing will be uh, doing more pellet testing. Like I say, there's three more to test here. So that'll be uh, 16 pellets tested in all. And currently only one that didn't do well. I have a feeling these all three of these will be doing well. And then I'll push them out to 30 and 40 yards. But uh, it's made a big difference. So if you're interested in uh, fitting a Robert Lane regulator, that's what you need to do. I mean, principles uh, of fitting a regulator are all the same. It's a matter of balancing them out. So, what I've got down here, regulator set 57 bar, hammer spring are packed out to 2.7 millimetres but that's after I cut some coils off. If, you, if you're using your standard spring you might not even need to pack it. Uh, the valve washers, they're mounted to 5.5mm. Uh, and the tra that's with the transfer port being bored out to 2.8 millimeters. So, uh, and that's on the valve. So that is the uh, fitting and tuning of the Reximex regime. Uh, if you've got a Reximex uh, Potensis or any of the others, uh, the tune will be very much similar, I'd imagine. Uh, the only difference being on the bottle rifles like the X here, well, that's already regulated so you don't need, need to mess with that but uh, there we go that is the uh, Robert Lane regulator fit to the Rexamex regime Test these uh, different pallets for it. The last three before we get to the range. You see how they form. First up with the Spitfires, weight 8.1 grains according to the tin. Place actually. Well, Big Dan told us about these through his uh, Reximex uh, rifle. Ok, 
Okay, really good. Six pound of tin for 500. It's a good budget pellet through uh, Reximex rifles. Try it through the uh, retail out like that. Definitely one that uh, Turkish barrels tend to like, so it's got a weapon as well. Okay, next up on the snow peak round is weighing 8.33 grains. Have the centre zero. Same again, a good pellet. I've tried these before in the dull well. Same again, about six quid a tin. Five hundred. Top right. and then sniper medium, 8.49 grains. Target then. Okay, not as good as the other two. Okay, so uh, I'll be adding these three pellets to the 30 yard test. <coughs> See if we can uh, continue from there to the 40 yard, but uh, that's the end of the video showing you how to strip the rifle down to it with the regulator. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.